Hi, I thought I'd give you a look at the new Windows 8. And so I'm going to start off by showing you around the new interface and how to use it, and then I'll show you the a couple of differences in Windows 7 and let you give yourself your own opinion. I've been a little upset by looking at on forums lately how they've been treating Windows 8 without even giving it a shot or looking at it. So I figured I'd give you a run through on how things looked at and act and how you can use it properly and how you can get better acquainted and be more productive when using the new environment that they have given us. Um, I'm going to start off by showing you the new Metro interface. Um, this is what you'll be greeted with when you start up your operating system. Um, I've already added a lot of applications as you can see here. Um, I've started off by customizing it a bit. Um, these are a few apps that you can install right at the beginning. Um, the weather app is something that you get right at the beginning. It's already installed. Uh, this is a calendar app and this is the um, it's called, um, I forget what it's called, TuneIn. This is a, um, a radio app that's built right into Windows 8 to begin with. Um, once it starts up here, you'll see what, it, what it's like. Um, the apps are meant towards to act like a tablet. This is something that some people have been really upset about. They think that everything for Windows 8 is being leaned towards tablet. Yes, it's more... Yes, the operating system is geared towards tablets more, but it's easier to navigate when things are larger and and cleaner looking. With this app, you can get all your local stations and listen to them. So from here, in order to get back to your Metro interface, you can see there is no start button or anything. And this, this drives people crazy right at the beginning. Um, from here, what you do is you just take your mouse and you go down to the bottom left-hand corner and you see there's a little start. This is normally where your start button would be, and so this is what people would do. So they just click here automatically, and it brings them right back to the Metro interface. When people see the Metro interface, they think, wow, this is really meant for tablets. But what this really is, is your start. And it's just put into this graphical unit with grids, and it's it's really easy to navigate now that you know what it is. You can do a lot of things here. Um, if you just right click, you can see down in the bottom right here, there's all apps. If you click this, it actually gives an extended view of all your applications installed on your computers instead of just the shortcuts that you have added there. And this will give you an option for control or command prompt, con computer control panel. And if you click on any one of these, it'll automatically open it. But if you right click on one, it'll give you more options down here, like pin to start, pin to your taskbar, open a new window, run as administrator. This makes it a lot easier on any normal person. Now if I just hit escape on my keyboard, it'll take me back to where I was going. Or if I escape out of tune or start again, this will bring me back to my start menu. From here, I'm just going to show you right here. If I cl right click on this one, it'll give me the option to unpin. I'm just going to unpin some of these. And you see I can click a bunch of them and just unpin right from my start menu. Now, from here, the store allows you to download more apps like I have here, and I'm just going to go right to my desktop. My desktop here, you see I have nothing on my app, my uh, dock anymore. And down here is my start, just like it should be. And so there's no start icon. But if you, when I scroll down here, you'll see it pops right up. And now, if I scroll to the left here, from the start, it shows me what's running. So right now I've already got TuneIn Radio, and I've got my remote desktop so I can show you Windows 7, what it compares to. And I've already downloaded our remote desktop app, which is pretty neat. And if I go over to the right here, this is what's called Charms. And this is um, their new way of settings and everything. And so right here, if I click Settings, this gives me an option for Control Panel, Personalization, PC Info, Help. This shows me the network settings, notifications, sound, brightness, and PC settings. If I click PC settings, this will allow me to customize my lock screen or my logon screen with different pictures, which was not able to do, be done in Windows 7. Go in here, you can adjust your user settings, Windows updates in here, notification settings, what applications you want to be able to notify you. It comes down with this neat little pop-up here from the corner. And then a lot of other neat things are be able to be changed and access in here. Your wireless settings, whether or not you want to be turned or on or off. 
and if I click up in the top left here, I can just easily switch between applications. Now a cool thing here, if I go back to Tune and Radio, if I click on the top, you see how I get this little hand? If I just click on it and I drag to a side, it allows me to just link this to a side here. Now if I click in this blank space over here, it allows me to pick any other application and fill that area. Just easy. And now it automatically adjusts the resolution so that it fits in this area. Now at any time, if I, if I click in this area or pull this bar, it's going to take my desktop over here and fill this side area instead. So let's, let me show you what this means. If I open up a few windows here, and let's just go into documents or something, and pull this to the side, it's going to show my open windows over here so I can easily just click and open my other one. So let's go back up here. Let's open Google Chrome or something. Do this again. And now it's going to show me my Google Chrome window instead. So that's pretty interesting. Now, when people see without a start menu, they're like, well, why is this? My productivity has gone down. Now I have to like move my mouse around and I can't search for applications. Well, most normal people nowadays are using shortcut keys on the keyboard. Well, your little Windows key still does the same effect. If you hit your Windows key, it automatically opens up the the start menu and you can just scroll right through your applications and if you hit start again it brings you right back to desktop it automatically closes it just like it would before now there's a lot of other shortcut keys that you can use um, for administrators if you use windows hold on the windows key and hit x it opens up many features which you wouldn't be able to use now because of this like um, your computer management window disk management, disk device manager, system, event viewer, power options, all these command and prompt with admin, which is very useful, your one run window, and um, other keys which are very common and use is Windows key and your R, opens up your window, your run window. Um, to open up your charms window, you can do Windows C, automatically opens up your charms. Windows D will automatically go to your desktop. Windows E automatically open up my computer or Explorer. If you do Windows F, it'll pull up your search window just like you had in your start menu before and it'll automatically search files only. And now if you if I exit out of this with escape, if I do Windows Q, it'll automatically go to your applications to search. Well now, I don't know why they chose Q, probably just as easier to hit with your fingers, but this will also pull up all your applications like we are looking at before, so you can just scroll through and just click one real easy. And let's see, If you, now if you do Windows Tab, instead of doing the cool arrow look, it automatically pulls up the side menu bar, and is able to, then you can right here, click and close or you can automatically just snap it. So if I wanted to snap it to the right or I want to snap to the left. So on my remote desktop I'm just going to remote into my computer over here. Now with Windows 7 you would have your start button. Now with this you get a little complicated because you have all your previously used applications. I don't think that's so necessary anymore that we have Windows 8. Let's just drag this to the left here and take a look. Now that we have Windows 8, if I hit the Start button, it automatically opens up your Start menu, which you would organize this, and you don't have to have your recently used applications because you'd be so used to which applications you have where. Now let's look up here. I have already labeled these. like These are my most valuable programs, productivity, utilities. Let me show you how to edit these. If I click this little slash down here, this will zoom me out and it will give me a, a greater view of all my groups. And If I right click on any one of these I can rename my group to anything. And then from here I can just drag these around and reorder these in any which way I want. Anytime I right click I can just go back to my all applications or just go back home. Escape. 
So let me go back to Windows 7. So from here, the search bar we already talked about, you just open up the Charms menu. Or anytime you can just click in between them, or you can search an individual application like the store. If I wanted to just search inside the store for a new app, wanted to search for, what is it, cut the rope, instantly comes up. Some good things about Windows 8 is the um, memory usage is far less than Windows 7. The processor usage is far less. I have a, a friend that's using it on his netbook already and it's it's far faster. As you can see how fast it's going around here switching between applications it's increasingly fast in a moment I'll show you a couple things that I really like about it um, if, you, if you look here at task manager you see the processes in this you can only sort by CPU and in this I have 94 processes running let me go back to my start menu my desktop let me open this task manager. Look at this. Completely revamped. This shows me what apps and what background processes are running. Now, anytime I can open up the app, and it'll show me what that's running. If I go under performance, it gives me this, these nice graphs. It shows me how many processes are running. These are running almost identical computers this in here gives me a startup option now and I can just go right in here and disable disable anything else I should just disable hmm. right here's all the details this would be normal processes so I can go in here and just kill the process of it another neat thing let's go back to my remote desktop session Let's drag this back to the left here. Open back up my desktop. Now, let me copy a file here. If I, for example, I'm sure that you have all have seen this, but if I copy a file from one computer, let's just copy this whole folder. It does this. If I were to copy another file, it would open another little window. Well, Windows 8, if I do this, let me just go in here real quick. Let me just copy one of these here. Look at that copy window. It shows the actual speed it's going at. Let me just copy another file. Look, it actually puts it in the same window, something they've done right. And it actually shows the speed it's going at. It gives you a graph. Instead of giving you this random speed, look, it's like stopped here. It's actually not going that speed. We know it's not. This is actually giving me a graph of the speed it's actually going at. It's decided here that it's yep now it's actually kicking down so the speed is actually going it's far more advanced than Windows 7 it's more user friendly and even though some things are getting hidden once you've learned keyboard shortcuts I'm sure that you'll find it's more agreeable and you'll be more productive when you're using your operating system because you'll be able to use snaps which there is a sh sh keyboard shortcut for the snaps which I believe it's um, let me go back in the remote desktop I believe it's Windows period but you might have to click on this first yep Windows period and now I can just choose my desktop again so now if I hit Windows period here it'll get rid of it or bring it back on either side.
and change between the two. Now inside my windows, I can do windows up on any of them. I believe I have to be in this one though. I do my windows up or left or right. It brings my window around or minimizes it. All neat shortcuts that everyone should learn. And then now that you've seen what Windows 8 has in the consumer preview and we have more to look forward to, here are some things that I've noticed. Uh, I've noticed that bec when you install Windows 8, if you have a Linux installation, it automatically takes gets rid of it and you can no longer use it. That's something that I'm a little disappointed in and I'm hoping that Linux can find a way around that and or Microsoft decides to go back on the way they've done things and make it easier for us to dual boot both Windows and Linux. Now, the other thing I've noticed is when you install applications, uh, Microsoft has created these cool icons, but there's no way for us to you know, change either the way our icons look. I'm hoping that in the actual release, they'll make a way for us to create custom icons and or change the ones that we have. Now, the, the final thing that I've found a little annoying is that I've been so trained and used to going down to start to shut down my computer that I often go there to shut down my computer. Now, log off is up here, and lock is up in your user icon, but to shut down is now in the charms menu, which is on the right, under here, which is actually kind of disturbing because you're often going to the left, but now it's on the right. It's something you figure out very quickly, but, I mean, you're so trained to go to the left, but now you're going to the right. But that's only three bad things to about, you know, 100 upgrades to the operating system. And, I mean, speed increases, um, you know, productivity increases. You have now you can change your backgrounds on your lock screens you can do all sorts of different things the video drivers are faster there's a bunch of different inten intense upgrades for windows 8 but you know it's up to you to decide whether or not you would choose to use it and i hope you will um, thanks for watching the video have a good day